Come on, go for 10, Zion Bertuzzi. 10 to nothing. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another episode of your Alaska Ice Eagles NHL 21 franchise mode. After last episode, I needed a bit of a break, so I took two or three days, gathered my thoughts, uh, but we're back here and I was thinking a lot about the insane overtime we had and then the performance we had afterwards against the Canucks. So let's back up a little bit. We ended up beating the Colorado Avalanche. It took seven games, but we ended up doing it and in game seven, there there was a three and a half overtime marathon. Alex in the comments, he says, dude, my anxiety was flying for those OTs with Colorado. That was intense. You're not wrong, Alex. And Archie says, longest OT ever. Jamal Hutchins, first line D pairing next year. What a legend. Absolutely. Jamal Hutchins, we had to call him up from injury. He was a guy that was kind of just a throw in, honestly, but he was the best shutdown defensive defenseman I've ever seen in a long ass game. He was making making all the poke checks, being the best sound defensive defenseman. We really, really needed Jamal Hutchins there. He played, I think, over half an hour. Then after that insane win, 48 hours later, it all came crashing down. We were swept by the Vancouver Canucks in four games. That is a yikes, not good enough, especially this was supposed to be the year. 55 wins, we won the President's Trophy. This was supposed to be the year we were supposed to go on a run. I said conference finals or bust and we didn't even come close. Now, there's a few players that I want to point the finger at. And first off, I was pretty hard on Shane Wright. Not having a goal in 21 playoff games, that sucks. That's not great. That's not a good look for anyone. But he is an assist god. He had 10 helpers. I mean, you look at his stats. He's not really a shooter. He has 99 passing for a reason. I mean, you look at all of his stats. He's never going to put up 35 goals, but he's always going to be an assist master. So never want the donut on the score sheet, but even guys like uh, Andre Burakovsky, for example, a guy who's supposed to put up goals, he's supposed to be the shooter on the team. He didn't have anything in the postseason. The donut, zero, not a good look. Rick McMuffin had only two goals in 11 games. Big Bad Zion only had five. I mean, good thing Kiefer Bellows and Crosby ended up showing up because there wasn't a whole lot aside from those guys. Wenberg didn't play bad. Hedman struggled with no goals. Our whole defense really struggled, actually. And of course, there's always going to be the debate on Hunter Lightning. The guy had a career year, 45 wins. He won the Vesna Trophy, and everyone's calling for me to get rid of him. But I'm committed to him for at least one more year. I said it when I signed this deal. I want a two-year deal. You can prove yourself. He's 24 years old. It's now or never for Hunter Lightning. He's going to be a good goalie, but can he get it done in the postseason? That's the big question mark. Now, I was looking at all the comments, and a lot of them were kind of saying the same thing that Brandon Berenfeld said. He said, the big things you need this offseason are another really good defenseman and a real top-line sniper. Rick McMuffin is better suited for the second line. Maybe you can package Burakoski and Wenberg as well as other pieces for a top-line sniper. You can move on from Wenberg because Luke Roach is ready for third-line minutes. I do agree with that. As far as Hunter Lightning goes, it's really a 50-50, maybe give him one last chance, and if he starts to shit the bed, send him packing. That's what I'm saying. And I'm only giving him, I like... If we're a bad team next year, he's only going to have one year left on his deal, so I'm going to have to trade him at the trade deadline. His leash is short. His leash is very, very small. So, again, I feel what you guys are saying about Hunter Lightning, but he's the guy I'm going with. No ifs, ands, or buts. He's my starter for next year. He's high elite, 90 overall, 24 years old. It's now or never for Hunter Lightning, and I really hope he's going to prove it. So we have to re-sign a few big-name players here, like Kiefer Bellows. He's going to want actually that's a really good contract four million for three years I can't say no to that absolutely that is a fantastic deal now a part of me is wondering if he's going to drop um, he wants four million for three years you jump it up one more year he wants six you go down one more year he wants 5.9 I, that might be a glitch. I'm really not sure about that. Uh, that's really weird. We're going to offer him $4 million for three years. 
that's really weird. But if he can continue on that 86 to 88 overall, I'm going to be pumped on that. Uh, Kiefer Bellows, what a guy. We ended up paying a third round pick for him. We sent in an offer sheet. The Islanders said, I don't want to deal with this guy. And he has been money ever since coming over. 51 points, 77, then 52 last year. Pretty close to a point per game in the playoffs. I'm a big fan of Kiefer Bellows. I'd like to hang on to him. 88 overall for $4 million. Taking a pay cut? I love this guy. We also got to make the decision on Chris Letang. Are we willing to commit another, what, $6 million to a guy who's probably going to drop to 84 overall? I'm going to write down the team. Uh, we might have to say goodbye to Zadorov as well. We don't have to re-sign anyone crazy, but we don't have a lot of money either. So if we are going to make a move, I like what Brandon is saying. We get a legitimate first-line sniper. So we have to package up Wenberg and Burakoski. So what? So be it. That's $12 million right there there, we can definitely make that work. I'm going to go ahead and hop into the draft here. We're going to see what's out there in free agency. I'm not going to make a splash at the draft. I think I'm going to stay put. We're in a win now mode, so we don't need to move up in the draft, take a prospect or anything like that. I'd like to see what's out there in free agency. Maybe we can make a splash there. Let's go ahead, skip all the way to our pick. Let's have a look at the top five here. Nasland, that was that uh, two-way forward franchise guy, goes to Detroit. That's awesome. Bailey goes Goes to uh, the Calgary Flames, Rogers to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Not a super deep draft. It looks like the top two guys are definitely studs, and then everyone else kind of follows suit. So with our first round pick, I'm thinking we should just make the pick. I don't think we should trade it or anything like that. Uh, Hillman, he is a 65 overall, medium top six. Okay, that guy goes to Newfoundland. Now there's a comment a couple episodes ago that were saying maybe look for a goalie. Is there a goalie in the first round I can take here? I don't see a goalie. Looks like maybe a second rounder or a third rounder. Yeah, maybe late second round, early third round, we can look at a goalie. So we're going to stick with our pick here at 26, I think. Uh, we can go with the confirmed medium top six, the sniper. Okay, Jorgen Steen. I like that name, Jorgen. He's three years away, four years away, four years. We got Merrick Halinka. Okay. Ooh, or this guy whose net's off only one year away. He's a defenseman? Yeah, he is. And defense. Defensive defenseman, I don't hate that. Six foot three, one year away. Oh man, what do we do here? We could go with a forward. Our forwards are pretty stacked. You know what? Maybe I might go with the defenseman here. Maybe I might go with Timothy. What a name. Timothy. Timothy Kuznetsov, who's only 17 years old. He played in the A-plus league, had two assists. Or we can go with Jorgen Steen. Or we have Griffin here, who is a medium top six defenseman, but he is at least four years away. I'm taking a bit of a gamble here. I'm going with Timothy. Timothy Kuznetsov. He is 70 overall medium top four. I'll take it. That's a great pick. That's a fantastic pick. Now, what about that other guy? Steen is 65, medium top six. I think we hit a home run there. Kuznetsov, what a pick. I'm not mad at that at all. I think that's a fantastic selection. Uh, that Slanny guy is 60 overall offensive defenseman. So yeah, absolutely made the right choice there. What a selection. No one else here is even close to 70 overall. So what a pick. I'm pumped on that. Let's see if there's a goalie we can pick here at uh, our second round pick because I would like to start getting our goaltending prospects a little bit better here. Doesn't look like there's anything, any goalies out here. What's the closest tendy? 79. So, hmm. Or we got Ola Dansk here, who is four years away or 20 years old. Goalies are always kind of hard to judge. Nathaniel Peterson's only three years away. Five years, five years. Basically, everyone is like five years away at this point. Maybe we'll have to wait and see if there's a goalie available late in the draft or maybe in another draft. Uh, but 58th overall, we might go with a forward here. Colin Avery played with the Flint Firebirds of the OHL. He's four years away at 18 years old. Eli Forrest, that's a fantastic fantastic name four years away as well. I'm going to go ahead and pick Colin Avery with our second round pick, the playmaker out of the Ontario Hockey League, and he's 60 overall, medium top nine. What did we miss out on? So Forrest was 61 overall, 62, 62, 62. So those guys were all low top six and low, um, low top four. So I'll take a medium top six, 60 overall over a low top four. And I'm going to go all the way to the sixth round here to make a pick. Best goal 
goalie available is like 213. So throwing out a random flyer here on a goalie, Miko Lettinen, uh, very similar to the Miko Lettinen we have currently. Um, I don't really know if this is the year for the goalies, actually. We might pass on all the attendees. We're going to pick a 20-year-old out of the KHL. He's four years away with our sixth round pick. Why not? Yuri Zykov, welcome to Alaska. Let's see what he's looking like. 59 low top nine. All right, we got a seventh round pick here. Let's pick a goalie. I'm committed to taking a tendy. I know I said I wasn't going to do it, but I'm committed. Let's see what goalies are out there, if any at all. Um, is there anyone that even has any scouted potential uh this guy scouted to go 453rd overall you know what he's 20 years old connor haley welcome to alaska and he's a medium backup 58 it's not terrible it's not the worst pick in the world and then there's a medium backup 60 overall okay i guess it was the worst pick all right Kiefer bellows he says yes to that really small contract thank you very much Kiefer. what a guy so that draft wasn't super exciting we did hit a home run however with that pick pretty excited about that young defenseman that we ended up drafting so that's a huge win in my books kuznetsov 17 years old 70 overall timothy what a fantastic name i love that guy so we have 19 million dollars to work with i'm not super worried about the cap because we're probably going to be shedding like 12 million dollars with uh with burakoski and uh alexander wenberg if we do decide to trade them so i'm looking at our defense here and a part of me wants to bring back nikita zadorov for our bottom pairing and then pair him with one of the kids either slegger or hutchins we have miko letton in here who has been really really good for us actually and now that i'm thinking about it i might keep headman over zadorov zadorov wants like three and a half million 3.2 for two years he's good for what he is but we can find players like him kind of taking away a roster spot from one of the young kids like Slager or Hutchins so we're gonna let Nikita Zadorov walk as well I'm gonna write out the team we are going to see how everything looks in free agency uh, we are looking good I'm pretty confident that we're gonna have to spend some money and make some trades so let's get to it okay so before we even look at free agency here I've penciled in our lineup and Basically, both of those players that we want to trade don't fit in our lineup, so that works out perfectly. We got Bertuzzi, Wright, and then X. We need a first-line sniper. Kiefer Bellows, Crosby, McMuffin, Kapanen, Roach, Greenway, Cole Huckins, Matt Calvert, and X. Defensively, we have Miko and Victor Soderstrom. We got Fleury and X, and then Miko Lettinen and Hutchins. So let's see what's out there in free agency. Let's see, is there any sniper? Oh my god, what? Where is everyone? 81 overall wants 9 million? No, the year we want to spend money and... Oh my god, look who it is. Oh boy. There he is. <laughs> oh man, I kind of wish you guys didn't see this because there's no way I can't sign Tyroning. There's no way... He's not. Uh, it's It has to work. I mean, look at his shooting category. He's really, really good. He had 35 goals. I mean, yeah, maybe. Oh, man. How much does he want? He wants $5 million for four years. Or we could go with Jesse Pugliarvi, who's also a sniper. Not quite as high of a shooting category as Ty Ronning. Oh, my God. Okay, so Jesse Pugliarvi, let's just compare the two. He looks like more of a playmaker than a pure sniper. Um, I think it's pretty obvious what we have to do. However... You know, it's not the end-all be-all because we have two players that we have to trade. If I pass up on Tyron, I know it's not going to be a super popular opinion, but it might be the best thing for the team because the best defenseman available looks like Shea Theodore, and I think I might be able, I mean, there's Jacob Slavin as well, but I might be able to find something else via trade. So before I commit to Tyron, okay, before we pull the trigger, let's see if there is... Uh, uh, let's see if there's any trades out there. I'm going to have to trade these guys regardless. So whether it's for prospects or picks or roster players, it's something that we're going to have to do. And they both have a lot of trade value, which is awesome. That's actually going to help us out big time, especially Alex Wenberg. So I'm looking for a defenseman first thing. I'm probably looking for a defensive defenseman since Miko is an offensive defenseman. Maybe that can be our top two. 
looking for a guy that can play with Miko. We need someone who is, you know, Victor Soderstrom gives it the plus three, which isn't bad. Uh, but if I can get like another 90 plus overall defenseman, that might be. So there is no shortage of top two defensemen out there. That's for sure. I'm looking for someone who's a defensive defenseman, though. Let's just see if there's any top two defensive defensemen out there. I'm sure there's going to be at least a handful. Well, there's actually one. DeAndre Harrison, who is 90 overall, plays with the Philly. Philadelphia Flyers. Ooh, he looks good. He would fit on our defensive pairing. One, he's making a lot of money, but would actually be saving money when you think about it if we are going to... Okay, hold on here. So if we go get DeAndre Harrison, who is really, really, really good, he's kind of the perfect... I mean, look at him. He's actually nasty. Look at his stats. He is a beast. Obviously one of the created players. But if we get DeAndre Harrison, and we're actually going to be saving money if we send both Wenberg and we send send Burakoski their way. Hopefully it's not a cap issue, it's not. And then we can use that extra money to sign Ty Ronning for the first line. Maybe that's all... I mean, he had 35 goals last year, maybe, maybe Ty Ronning might be the ticket. Oh boy, we get Harrison and Ty Ronning. What do we do? So I'm looking at the Flyers' wing situation. They have Pavel Bushnevik, and they have a couple guys here. They have Joel Farabee, Nikolai Ehlers. So they could use another second-line scoring winger. Now, I think we might have to do this just straight up. I'm going to see if I can get a third-round pick. They get Wenberg, who's a proven scorer, a guy we've had for a little while. We brought him in from free agency, and he's been pretty damn good for us, honestly. Like, close to 70 points a year. He's been really, really good. Kind of sucks that we have to get rid of him, but we just have too many young players coming up, and I kind of need Luke Roach to get those third-line minutes. So, I mean, Alex Wenberg, are you going to go to Philadelphia, and are we going to get another franchise defenseman? Trade rejected. Okay, they like Alexander Wenberg. I tried for the third. Might have been a little bit too much. Let's see if this will go through. Trade rejected. Okay, so maybe the trade value is pretty pretty even. It looks to be in our favor by a little bit. I mean, I can throw a pick or a low-level prospect at him. It's not a big deal. We got lots of players we can part ways with here, like maybe a low elite 22-year-old, 68 overall, Johan Stahlberg. We got him from free agency, so why not? Does that sweeten the deal enough? DeAndre Harrison, is that enough? Trade rejected. Okay, so maybe we're just going to have to chip at it here. I might step up and give them this guy. Uh, he is a right winger. We picked him in the second round. That seems like a lot to give up though. Um, you know what? You gotta pay to play, alright? You have to pay to play. And it might be better to give him Johnny Schaefer. I know a lot of you guys like Johnny Schaefer for no particular reason, but I think we're gonna have to part ways with Johnny Schaefer. This guy's a little bit younger, only two overalls less. We're gonna go ahead and throw in Johnny Schaefer. So a couple of prospects, Burakoski and Wenberg for an elite defensive defenseman, DeAndre Harrison, trade rejected. Damn, they are being, uh, they really don't want to get rid of this guy. What about a pick? What about a third? Do I have a third? I don't. I don't know. I could maybe throw in a second. Let's try with a third. Is a third enough to get it to go through? Trade rejected. They really like Wenberg. They really don't want to part ways with this guy. I guess I can understand that. I'll give you a 2026 second. Maybe Stahlberg is a bit too low. I'll have to throw in that other uh, defenseman. Let's see. Will a second get it done? Trade rejected. Jesus. Okay. These guys are being tough. How about two seconds? Okay, this is a lot here. Wenberg, Burakoski. I mean, it's not like we have a ton of options. He's kind of the perfect defenseman, and he's a beast as well. It's not like he's strictly a defensive defenseman. He can put up some serious numbers. Fits on our first line... He fits on our first pairing. He kills all the penalties. Two seconds, Burakoski, Wenberg, and Schaefer. Trade rejected. Should I offer them three first round picks? Oh man, this is an investment. This is a serious investment if we are going to be going all in on John DeAndre Harrison here. Three first round picks for Koski and Wenberg. 
that is a lot to pay, okay? That is a lot. I'm talking like more than I should be paying, but how often do you get a defensive defenseman who's 90 overall, 24 years old? This is my absolute final offer, okay? I know there's people in the comments that are gonna be saying, this is way too much, stop, what are you doing? I'm doing it. Three firsts, Burakovsky and Wenberg. Trade rejected, wow. Okay, that is somewhat shocking. Maybe it's a cap situation. Maybe if I give them Wenberg and two firsts, maybe they don't want the extra cap. Maybe they don't want the extra that was Andre Burakovsky. I don't know, let's just try it. Let's see what they say with this. Wenberg and a first, so no, obviously. Maybe it's a cap thing. Maybe they don't want more cap, that's understandable. I'll give you two firsts and Alexander Wenberg. What about that? Trade rejected. Okay, so maybe if we keep adding prospects here and not giving them so much cap because Burakovsky was, well, not great. Um, he's 83 overall making six million. So maybe it's a cap thing. We can work around this here. Wenberg two firsts and Slager. Trade rejected. It's, a, it's too far off. What if I threw in a second? I really don't know at this point. I highly doubt they're going to want to get rid of this guy. I mean, it makes sense. A second? Trade rejected, yeah. I, I've tried to offer them the farm. It's not going to happen. That was a giant waste of time. I really, really wanted DeAndre Harrison. We tried to give him three first-round picks and tons of everything else, and they still said no. But it looks like we might have found something better. Thomas Audison. Maybe not better. Uh, he's a defensive defenseman but he puts up offensive defenseman numbers it would fit perfectly on our first pairing so that looks like a plus five um he is well-rounded everywhere he's not quite as physical a weird defensive defenseman his defensive category is great defensive awareness is awesome i like thomas audison to be honest with you but are they going to want to get rid of him because defensive defensemen are so hard to come by uh they don't want to trade him so that's understandable he makes a lot less than um um, than DeAndre Harrison did. The trade value is even right there with Burakovsky and Wenberg. Will this go through? One, two, trade rejected. Okay, that's fine. We we know what we can offer. I don't think I'm going to offer that much, but let's just start it off with two seconds and Burakovsky and Wenberg. Will that go through for Audison? Trade rejected. Okay, now what if we put Slegger in here? Oh my god, this is going to be the longest video ever, just getting trade reject after trade rejected. Ulrich Slegger Slager, two seconds, Burakovsky and Wenberg, trade accepted, oh my god, finally, okay, we got a big piece to the puzzle, there he is, Thomas Audison, oh my god, that was a lot of wheeling and dealing, a low franchise defenseman, 24 years old, he is from Norway, that's awesome, Thomas Audison from Norway, our top two defensemen are Norwegian and Swedish, and then we have Victor Soderstrom and Hayden Fleury, and then we got Jamal Hutchins and Miko Lettinen, it's not perfect, but it's better than what it once was, Audison, I hope he puts up numbers with Hedman, I hope he's just a good, steady, defensive piece for him. He's not huge either, 5'11". I like this guy though. Thomas Audison, it's not DeAndre Harrison, but it's a pretty good consolation prize. Unfortunately, he's not listed as a first line sniper, but he fits on the second line. I think it might work out. His shooting category is awesome. We give him a plus three, a plus five. Who knows what's going to happen? He wants a four year deal. Let's go a, you know what? You're Tyrone. You can get whatever you want. Let's go 5.5 for four years. Hopefully, he signs on the dotted line. I mean, we got Bertuzzi as well. Uh, we don't need Bertuzzi. He's a two way forward. I know there was talks of reuniting Bertuzzi and Bertuzzi, but I don't think we should. Ooh, look at this guy. 76 overall, 20 years old in free agency. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Please sign with me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if there's any young guys I can grab here for the AHL, and then we're going to see if Ty Ronning signs. Okay, now there's one thing I didn't show you guys, and that is the goaltenders, okay? You, you have to promise not to comment to get this guy, because I can't do it. 
but there he is zane Shao. it says he's chilling in italy but he's clearly from china uh he's in free agency okay not to alarm anyone but he's there we're going to we can sign him if we really wanted to have a one-two punch of zane Shao and hunter lightning but i'm not that makes no sense it makes absolutely no sense um i'm trying to convince myself not to do it we're gonna let zane Shao walk we're gonna see what happens i'm gonna roll one more year with Hunter Lightning. I promised him that. I promised him that at least, so I have to I have to hold up my end of the bargain. Ooh, Roman Yossi. Um, hello. Roman Yossi, how are you? He's got three years left at 9 million. He's 82 overall. Absolutely not. Okay, we got that stud. 76 overall, 20 years old. Thank you very much. Free candy. Waiting on Ty Ronning to sign, and oh my god. I can't believe it happened. The return, baby. Oh my god. Almost a week into free agency and Zane Chow is still a free agent. I'm looking here for a fourth line winger. We're going to eventually need a fourth line winger here and maybe it's one of these guys. Jake Lecision. Fantastic name. He was a former second round pick of the Vegas Golden Knights. 26 years old. I want to find someone who's going to fit perfectly on our fourth line maybe a grinder let's see what's out there you know what I'm gonna bring back a familiar face here in Derek Stepan he's cheap he's a good fourth liner 1.5 million is not there is another team interested so I'm gonna give him 1.9 come back to the team that restarted your career there you go we're done hopefully he signs we have our new fourth line we have a new first line and also with and also with Tyroning, we can bring him up on the first or the second line. Him and McMuffin can kind of go one and two. So we got Derek Stepan. I'm good. This team kind of got changed a little bit. I'm uh, I'm interested to see how they're going to perform. I hope the chemistry works out. And I mean, we couldn't not sign Tyroning. Come on. Okay, the moment of truth here. Let's see how these new look lines are going to look. I hope the chemistry works out. And oh, baby. Okay. All right. Uh, Hold on, McMuffin's an 82. That's got to be a joke. That's going to have to fix itself. Ooh, we got two plus threes. Okay, okay, I'm happy with this. Hold on here. Let's figure this out. Uh, Derek Stepan, what does Paquette have? 80 for draws. We got to put him there, right? Uh, yeah, that's good. That all looks good to me. Three vets on the fourth line. I like it. Greenway, Roach, Kapanen. Bellows, right, McMuffin. McMuffin was 88 in the postseason, so I hope he kind of jumps back to reality. Crosby's still an 89 with Zion. Oh my god. Tyroning, Sidney Crosby and Zion Bertuzzi. What a freaking line. Kiefer Bellows is down as well, but I think that's going to jump up. Uh, if I did that, it's only a plus one. So Crosby gives it the plus three. Defensively, okay, let's see if this works out. It's not a plus five, but it is a plus three. Hayden Fleury and Victor Soderstrom are a plus one. I like that a lot. And then Miko Lettinen, we're going to get this guy out of here. We're going to hopefully put Jamal Hutchins here uh, we're gonna see how that works out with uh, Miko letting in so the good news is Jamal Hutchins is up to an 80 overall. He's definitely NHL ready. The bad news is he does not work with Miko Lettinen. So uh, he is a two-way defenseman, offensive defenseman. That's not going to work. Miko, we might have to scratch you for someone else. Not ideal. Um, Miko Lettinen has been good for us, but we might have to... Ooh, what's this guy looking like here? That was the guy we just signed. He's a two-way defenseman. We could bring him up he's not quite ready uh this guy's a two-way defenseman as well we might have to find someone in free agency i gotta fix up that ahl line that doesn't look good at all a bunch of minuses there but we look good offensively i'll give us that that's something that i'm pretty proud of i'm glad ronning works out with crosby and zion uh Kiefer, shane wright and mcmuffin i like this a lot to be honest with you i'm gonna end off this video pretty quick here but i at least want to get one game of simulation done with Tyronning on the squad and with uh, and with Autosyn as well, our new stud defenseman. Speaking of defensemen, I want to see if there's anyone left in free agency that we might be able to sign. Uh, Kalen Addison, he's there. He's an offensive defenseman. We don't need Kalen Addison. Uh, maybe someone like Travis Sanheim. Um, why not? He fits on our defensive pairing three. We have the cap to do it. 19 million. I mean, why the hell not? He, he's way too good to be chilling in free agency. 
Travis Sanheim, there you go. Hopefully he can jump in right away, two-way defenseman. Uh, I'm also seeing, hold on, Jamie Drysdale. He's an offensive defenseman. We don't need Jamie Drysdale, but he's an offensive defenseman. Oh, my God. Okay, I got to stay away. I got to stay away. He is an RFA, so you're going to have to pay something to get him. We're going to stay away. I know it looks good, but our team is basically set. I don't need him. I don't need him. I don't need him. Let's go here. Start off year number five. Five years here in Alaska. We got Tyron and we got Otteson. Game number one. The fans are hungrier than ever for a Stanley Cup. This is the year to do it. Let's go. Period number one. And it's 2 nothing. And guess who scores the first goal? Oh, baby. Ty freaking running. And then Miko Hedman. Oh, my goodness. Two of my favorite guys. Period number two. It's 4 nothing and guess who's got another one baby the goat himself and then Shane Wright scores oh my god please get a hat trick in your first game Luke Roach makes it 5 nothing. Lettinen makes it 6 nothing. come on come on you need the hat trick Miko Lettinen gets another 7 nothing, 8 nothing. oh my god uh, Kiefer Bellows makes it 8 what a debut 9 nothing. Kiefer Bellows are you joking me no, come on go for 10 Zion Bertuzzi 10 to nothing. I've never had a simulation game like 11 nothing. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, you ruined the shutout. Oh, wait, why is Skinner in the net? What the hell? 11 to 1, but what? What the hell happened to that? <laughs> what a ridiculous game. 11 to 1. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> what the hell was that? And why was Stuart Skinner in the net? I'm so confused. I mean, talk about a debut. <laughs> Five points for Ty Ronning, two goals for Zion. I I really don't know what to say. Um, I've, I'm rarely speechless, but this is one of those times. Crosby with three helpers. I mean, what the hell happened there? Almost everyone had a point. Jamal Hutchins didn't have a point, but he's a plus five. That's a team player right there, baby. That's what you love to see. Um, Audison didn't have a point, which is absolutely shocking. Um, uh, Greenway had one assist, so only like four players didn't have a point. That is insane. And why didn't Hunter Lightning get the start? I'm so, so confused. I just don't understand. Uh, yeah, not bad. <laughs> not bad at all. I'm just going here. Hopefully Travis Sanheim will sign, and he doesn't. We got to go at least one more game. Okay, come on here against the Colorado Avalanche. I don't even know what the hell that game was. 11 to 1, that is ridiculous. Period number 1. It's 2-2. Two, two. Crosby and guess who? Oh my god. Signing of the year already. Hunter Lightning is between the pipes. He does allow 2. It's a 2-2 two, two game here. Period number 2. And it's 3-3. Three, three. Crosby and Alex Newhook. Alright, this game is a little bit less crazy than the other one. Just by a hair. Power play for Alaska. Alright, 3-3 three, three still. Shot are pretty much even this one could go either way here 30 to 28 are the shots haven't had a shot in what seems like forever four minutes left three two key for freaking bellows baby there you go but then alex newhook comes right back oh my god we're going into ot are we going to go into a shootout this video is already going to be the longest one ever and we are going into a shootout well, let's go here we go shane wright starting it off not known for scoring and he doesn't score there goalie with a big blocker save who do we got here Nathan McKinnon all right Nathan McKinnon stops up but Hunter Lightning says no not today stands his ground we got big bad Zion coming in here going wide oh baby he goes top glove on Tuka Rask he's still in the NHL here comes Miko Rentanen comes in one too many moves and a big poke check there from fellow countryman Hunter Lightning Sidney Crosby he's got two goals in the game Trying for a third, but Tuka Rask says no. Finish goalie versus finish goalie. Nick Bolt in on Lightning. Oh my god. He seriously did that. Hold on, we have to watch this. Oh boy, that was gross. I've never seen that done in a shootout before. I've never seen the computer try it. He tucks it back. Oh my god, he let it go forever. That was like two seconds. Oh, Hunter Lightning. Oh man, beats him clean. That is gross. 
All right, here we go. Tyroning number seven. Oh my god, he comes in and to Garask equal to the task. Okay, Kale McCarr can win it. The smooth skate defenseman and he shoots it wide. All right, here we go. Come on, put some pressure on here. Rick McMuffin comes in, tries to go five hole, but again, the finished goalie says no. What do we got here? We got Don't Be Sod 20 coming in on Lightning and a big blocker save. Okay, I mean, it happened last year in the playoffs. These two teams like to go the distance. Um, uh, Miko Hedman, sorry, I don't even know who that was. He tries to go five hole and Tuka Rask says no. Captain Gabe coming in. Another save. Oh my god, this one might go all night here. Who do we got up next? We got Odison, the new guy. Glove sides wide open. Oh, he tried to he tried to bring it back and go blocker. A big save. Oh my god. Samuel Gerard. We got the defenseman coming up. He can win it. And oh my god, what a save. Blocker side. Everyone's going blocker here. Kiefer Bellows coming in. Oh, man. I thought he was going to go five hole, but he goes low glove. What a shot. We can win the game here. Alex Newhook, he's got a goal, and he gets another one. Here we go. This is a marathon. We got Luke Roach with the yellow skates looking like a stud, trying to go five hole once again. Oh, my God. I need to take a break here. Uh, Tyson Jost coming in, and a big poke check. All right. Hunter Lightning and Tuka Rask. Former teammates, both number 40. Jordan Greenway, the big guy. Again, trying to go five hole. What's with the five hole? All right, we got Evgeny Malkin. Oh my God, saving Malkin for this round? Are you kidding me? That's a cheeky move. And they win in what seemed like round a thousand. Oh my God, Gino gets the best of Sid. Can I see how many shots that was? Uh, what round was that? That was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Round nine of the shootout. That was a marathon. All right, so Ty Ronning has seven points in two games. Decent start. Decent start, buddy. You love to see it. Travis Sanheim is good to go. All right, so let's go ahead here and get Travis Sanheim in the lineup. Hopefully the chemistry works. Uh, but wow, what a start here. What a crazy first two games. Just ridiculous. Now, Miko Letton has been great. It's not like I can take him out. Uh, do we take out Jamal Hutchins and put him in the minors? Like, what do we do here? I kind of want to leave it up to you guys. Uh, I got to go ahead and call him up. I'm going to go ahead and throw him in regardless. I just don't know where yet. We're going to see what chemistry works out. Travis Sanheim, way too good to be down there in the AHL. Way too good to be in free agency. So Travis Sanheim and Jamal Hutchins doesn't get any sort of pluses at all. What about if I put Miko Letton in and uh, him as well? Still gives it a zero. I'd rather give it to uh, Jamal Hutchins, but I kind of feel bad for Miko Lettinen. I'm going to let you guys decide in the comments what we should do. You know I can't end on a loss, so I got to go one more game at least. We can't end on a loss. Uh, of course, it's Ty Ronning's old team as well, the Tampa Bay Lightning. So let's go here. Game number three, period number one. It's 1-1. One, one. Miko Hedman and Matthew Phillips, former Buffalo Saber legend, the Calder Trophy winner, Matthew Phillips, period number two. All right, two to one. Travis Sanheim in his first game. You love to see it. There you go. We're being outshot like crazy, but it doesn't matter, baby. That's Hunter Lightning stopping pucks all day, every day, making a ton of saves here. I'd love an insurance marker. Five on three. Oh, man. How are you not going to score there? Power play for Tampa Bay. They're lethal. And then Zion Bertuzzi. Thank you for the insurance marker. Oh, wait. McGillney gets one on Hunter Lightning. Uh, the shots are dead even. 13 seconds left. And and we hold off with the big W. There you go, boys. Not a bad start. A crazy start, actually. A ridiculous start. Tyroning with another assist, because of course he does. What a crazy start. Eight points in three games for Tyroning. An 11-1 to win. I don't know what to think of this team here. I'm excited for it. Here's how the guys are doing throughout the first couple of games. McMuffin hasn't scored yet. I'm a little bit worried about uh, Miko Lettinen. What do we do with that situation? I'm happy with how everyone else is producing it's only three games in uh, and then as for goalies it's uh, one and one for some reason Stuart Skinner had that start I don't know why but that's how it went as for skaters I mean I'm just gonna leave it there that's that's all I gotta say you'd love to see it so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one I'm excited to read the comments from this one I'll see you guys then